The helicopter is on the way. It's just coming down from the mountain. And we've got these two big, huge piles of stuff. 465 kgs in each load to head up the mountain. We're gonna load him up. He's bringing coffee down from up there that I'm taking back to Garoka. So stay tuned, this is gonna be a good one. We're gonna do a low route back to Garoka. So you're gonna see lots of cool parts of PNG. As you can see, we did not fit all of it in there very well, but it did just barely fit. We're gonna go ahead and load up all the coffee now and then get out of here. System test, okay. We're at 6,000 pounds. We're gonna rotate at 57, at 67 if we had to come back in for any reason. We're just going up to 8,000. So like I said, we're gonna do the low route on the way back to Garoka, just for something a little bit different and a little more enjoyable for me and you. Morsby 5565, November Tango Echo Taxi. November Tango Echo Morsby, go ahead. Morning again, November Tango Echo Taxi, Sumogu, Garoka, 1 POB. November Tango Echo. Uh, safe abort point. I would say airspeed alive by that yellow cone up there on the left. Just because it was a little muddy today. Oh, it was a lot muddy today, as you can see my airplane earlier. And uh, a little bit longer grass as well, kind of halfway down. So we'll be airspeed alive at that point, otherwise we'll stop on the runway before we get to the top of the hill. Um, flaps up, full reverse, for going off for any reason, idle, cut off, pull off, and shut off. Masters will crack my door after takeoff, we'll pitch for 85 knots, we'll consider a bill. Um, consider feather, 85, then 80, full flaps, cut off, pull off, and shut off. We'll make a right hand turn down to lower terrain. Um, hit my emergencies, masters will crack my door. Ignition inlet and lights are done. We're 24 degrees at basically 4,500. Oh, 1,390, so 13, 1,340. 1,340? 1,390. Ignition condition flaps 20. Make sure they're actually at 20 now. All station Smogu 1207, November Tango Echo, taxiing Smogu for Garoka. We'll be on climb not above 8,000. Smogu. Here we go, 1340. There's torque is set. My nose up and out a little bit. There's airspeed alive. 
Bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. And there's airborne. A bit of drizzle on the rain or the windshield. These guys will wave as we go by. Like I said, we're just going up to 8,000 today. We're already at 4,600. Looks like it should be nice and cloudy overcast all the way back, which would be nice and cool for in here. We're over 85 knots, we'll go 10 degrees of flaps. Over 90, we'll go zero and bring our prop to 2,000 RPM. And get our departure time, four, five, zero, six. Or is it five, five, six, five, November Tango Echo, departure. November Tango Echo, more to go ahead. November Tango Echo departed Samogu. Time four five. We'll be tracking three three zero on climb, not above eight thousand. Estimating Goroka zero six. November Tango Echo, not above eight thousand. Because most of my clouds right now are probably at six thousand, I'm just going to remain here at five thousand three hundred and bring on my torque on back down to twelve fifty. You see a lot of clouds around and you see clouds touching all the mountains and stuff and you can't see around this mountain here but I know that there's this huge valley that goes out that way towards Garoka and pretty much 99% of the time it's nice and wide open and the clouds aren't sitting inside the middle of the valley. Usually the rain starts up on tops of the mountains and works its way in but I mean it's still only noon right now. So I don't expect it to be raining in the valley yet. I think the lowest route that I can actually get back to Garoka is right around 500. six, not 500, 6,000, I think 200, I think is actually the absolute lowest. So we'll actually see today. We'll try the lowest route and see how low we can stay to get all the way back to Garoka and do it safely. 500. 500. I think Betty's determined it's 500. If you'd like to try the same route here on your flight simulator at home, um, down on my Patreon page, I actually flew pretty much the exact same route coming out here, and I'll have a link down below there, where I have like 60 or more flights that are all around P&G to some of these cool locations that I go to. Some of them even have patches where you can patch them into Microsoft Flight Sim or X-Plane 11 that some of the other people have made that were not in existence. So pretty cool thing if you want to check that out if you are a flight simmer. As well as a Kodiak course, I made one just because I knew that the SimWorks was making a Kodiak and it was coming out in December. So I made a course to teach you guys how to fly this the correct way. If you don't know how to fly a G1000 or fly a turbine or anything, this would be the course for you. What my plan is, is to head up here to AYTR Tarabo and then take a left there and then kind of, there's some lower routes up in this area up here that I'm gonna try to get up through. I think it's 6,200, I think. So we'll see if how it works. I'm still at 5,300 now. And really depending on how strong the rain, I mean, it's just sprinkling right now, but even sprinkles makes it difficult when there is a high overcast and there is a shadow on all the mountains. And then when rain is introduced on your windscreen, it makes it very, very difficult to see what's in front of you. Right now it's not too bad, but hopefully it won't pick, be picking up anymore, especially until we get out into the Groca Valley. But you know what, there's a cool, couple little cool villages right here along the edge. I'm actually going to just come down there and um, give them a flyby. You guys can see, man, it's crazy where some of these villages are. And there's um, all kinds of like uh, gardens and all kinds of stuff out here. 500. All right, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and start climbing up a little bit. I think it's the next hill over that I actually need to be climbing up to my altitude. What we can do is we can turn our terrain on. I don't typically fly with it because that's all it shows me. But yeah, so basically these little tiny yellow dots right here, that's where I'm going. I like to be able to actually see this. If it was raining and, and it was more of a concern for me, I'd definitely turn it on, but I mean, we're more than VFR today. 
One nice thing about the terrain is, is when you turn it on, you can quickly see if you can get over top of this gap in front of me. Well, not every time, because sometimes when the gaps are really close, it just shows it red. But I'm at 5,700, and it's not saying I can cross it, but it looks like I can cross it from here. And one way I can tell is if I'm seeing more and more ground on the other side of the uh, over side of the ridge, then I'm going to cross it. If I'm seeing less and less as I get closer, that means I'm below it, and I'm not going to make it over top of it. Oh, as I'm just, I just pick out one point and I just stare at it and I just see if it's disappearing, disappearing, and it looks like the one point I was looking at was disappearing. So that means it's just ever so slight. So I'm going to go up another 50 feet and now I'm seeing more and more as we're coming in. So now you can see, we're going to come up here, take a left into this little trough, a seven knots of tailwind. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, that's not the one I want. I think I want the next one. It's hard when there's clouds and you're down low. Even though mountains look very familiar, they kind of all look the same when there's a high overcast and you're kind of below the tops of all of them. And all the, the ridges that you would normally be able to go, oh, that's such and such mountain, all the tops are in the clouds, so you just don't see which one is the actual top. I'm at 6,100. I'm going to try to just remain here at this altitude. See if I can get through this gap up here. I'm pretty sure I can. Oh, I'm not I'm extremely familiar with this Pacific Valley. So I'm going to head off here to the right. That's going to get me enough where I can look down the valley and go, yeah, that's the one I want. Or yes, I'm at an altitude that I can actually continue on safely. And if I can't, then what I can do is give me enough space that I can just do a quick 180 back out the other valley over there. I look at my winds, I've got 10 knots, well, I've got 12 knots of kind of quartering tailwind over there. And as I'm coming up, I'm seeing more and more of the valley sooner because I'm on this side of the valley as opposed to that side of the valley. And yeah, this looks like the one I was looking for. I won't go above 6,200. If there was a lot more weather and everything involved in this particular flight, what I would do is I would do 20 degrees of flaps, push the prop forward, and then slow on down to like 85 knots. And that's just going to give me more time and space to really think about what I'm trying to do here. So here is just about 6200. This is the end of the valley right here. And it kind of cuts off to the right here in a second, like a, like a cutout of the valley. Yeah, here's exactly 6,200, and yeah, looks like I should be able to get through. We'll cut through this way right here. Oh, actually, closer to 6,300. Make sure there aren't any towers here. Nope. Then once you get over this other little valley, it kind of just drops on down really quick. Makes it easy. And looking out that way, we're right into the Garoka Valley. Oh yeah, looks like I'm about 6,400 now. I'd say that's probably a little bit more of a comfortable um, altitude to be coming through here rather than 62. I mean, you'd be scraping the trees at 6,200 feet. As you can see, we can already see Garoka way up there. And the whole valley is wide open. We're 18 miles out. We're just about ready to call up tower. I'm gonna start listening. With uh, BM Modix 1027 and track for Australian approach, report final. 1017, track and report straight in for final 35 right. No, but for Tango Echo. There you go. That was fun for me. Hopefully it was fun for you guys. Give it a thumbs up if you guys did enjoy that a lower route, getting to see a little bit more terrain around Papua New Guinea, especially on a day like today where it's nice and cloudy, over gloom, kind of gloomy, but makes everything look so green. 
take a look at my weight. We're 5,900 pounds landing, so my V-Ref is going to be 66 knots. Fuel selectors are on. We can turn our taws back on. Our lights, our inlets are done. If we have to go around, it's power up 20 degrees. Pitch for 73, reset ITT to 740. Up and harness, we'll get here shortly when we get a little bit closer. And we don't need to, but we can even OBS this runway right here. 350 gives us a nice extended center line right there, even though we can see it right ahead of us. But it's still helpful sometimes, especially if there are a lot of clouds in the valley and you can't see it. You know, like, if you're kind of maneuvering around clouds, you might not even be able to see it, but you know, I know I'm going through the center line right now, so I'm kind of like looking kind of thing. So that's where it's really helpful. 100 miles out. We've got prop harness, we'll do harness now. We'll do prop and everything like that once I strike getting closer to like maybe six miles and I'll start just pulling the power back, push the prop forward and get my flaps in really quick. So that at 1.8 nautical miles, I'm basically 500 foot above, at least indicated on here. And that's gonna give me like the perfect glide slope down in there. And as always, it's bumpy into the Garoka Valley. There's six miles indicated here. We'll reduce our power first. Push the prop forward nice and slow. Up and harness done. Crook Tower, November Tango Echo, five mile final, three five right. So, Matango Echo, runway 35 right, clear to land. Clear to land, 35 right, November Tango Echo. I'm just going to maintain my altitude here for a second. I'm just 5,800 feet. I want to be 5,600 feet at 1.8 miles, so I still have a ways to go. I don't really want to go down any lower quite yet. About 10 degrees of flaps. Bringing my power back more to like eh, 450 foot pound of torque. That's going to slow me down even more, allow me to get my 20 degrees of flaps and below 120 knots. Lots of forward yoke pressure, get those flaps in. We want slowest at 66 knots. I probably don't need to come in quite that slow. That's like a 3,000 foot long runway. Three knots of tailwind. Go full flaps now, just to help slow us down a little bit more. I don't really want to go quite down yet. There's two miles. And we're looking at 1.85600. That's right where we want to go start going down. Five hundred. And once I get my V-Ref set in here at 66, we've got two knots of tailwind. Coming in around 450 feet per minute on descent. We'll shoot to land around the 500 foot marker. If you land past it, you kind of go down a hill and it's kind of a pain. But not a tailwind. Bit of a sinker. I have an updraft now. Then another sinker. One out of tailwind. A couple knots fast. You know it's a tailwind, so I'm gonna get my power just a tiny bit early. I did a little bit before. Well, this is a two-part series. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you didn't see the first one, the flight going out there, it was a pretty muddy landing. So go back and watch that one. I'll leave a link down at the end of this movie, if you, or movie, if you guys want to watch that as well. Uh, they're almost, they're like 20 minutes, sometimes a half hour long. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Give this a video a thumbs up if you really did enjoy it. Share it with your friends. If you like the on-the-ground content kind of stuff out there, go check out my Patreon page where I have a lot more of those like exclusive videos for members only on the ground.
and I'll see you guys next time.